Hey there. I've um, I've never done this before, but uh, okay, here goes. I'm Joshua Bardwell. I'm 45 years old. Live in Knoxville, Tennessee. Uh, professionally, I, I'm a YouTuber. I have a YouTube channel. I'm into drones, FPV. And my idea of an ideal date is on a Sunday afternoon to go to a parking garage that's completely empty and fly drones and test analog receiver modules to see which one has the best range. So if that's you, if you're into that, that sounds like a good time. Just like swipe whichever way means to good yes. And uh, maybe we'll sync up. Because like a video feed has the sync pulses and If you saw the title of this video and you thought analog receiver module testing, who uses analog anymore? <laughs> I've switched over to DJI, <laughs> then this video is not for you. D oh, d d d get out of here, you DJI. For those of you who are still here and are still flying analog, here's the big question. You could spend 150-ish dollars on a TB on a uh, rapid fire. You could spend 110-ish dollars on a fusion module. You could spend 80-ish dollars on a Fox Ear wildfire. And if you wanted to do that, I have tests that show how those all perform against each other. But what if you just have like 30 or 40 or maybe $60 to spend? What can you get in that price range? That is what we're looking at today. This is the AKK. It doesn't even freaking have a model number or anything. It's just the AKK 5.8 gigahertz receiver module. It costs 32 freaking dollars. Could it possibly be any good for $32? Could it possibly be that you won't even notice a difference in performance compared to like a top of the line rapid fire or fusion? I'm gonna show you test results and you'll be able to see for yourself what that extra money gets you. And this on the left is the Yuru AV. That's the company that makes those little adapters that they make a bunch of stuff, but they make the adapter that goes on the side of your DJI goggles. <laughs> hey, am I right? Analog, not dead yet. They make a receiver module, the URAV RX5808, and we're going to test that today as well. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Later on in the video, we're going to take a look at the user interface for these modules and see what kind of features they have. But none of that freaking matters if the actual performance is not up to your standards. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the Yubru AV RX5808 Evo. Oh, that's what it's called. Oh, I didn't see that on the Banggood page. Hey, thank you, Past Joshua. And we're going to compare it straight away against the rapid fire, um, arguably the best, if maybe tied with the Fusion, but certainly one of the best, if not the best, analog receiver module you can get today. And we're back here in my uh, parking garage where I like to <laughs> hang out all, all weekend and just uh, test analog receiver modules. Ladies, I'm married. This, uh, this catch is already caught. <clears throat> but... Um, you can see how the performance is. Is it as good as the rapid fire? It better not be. Otherwise, Immersion RC has really done a terrible job. Um, yeah, I got some screen rolling there. Got some static. We're really putting it through its paces. Is it good enough to use at a price of $60? I think the most interesting test would be UAV versus Wildfire, especially given their price. I may not have done that test. So perhaps I shouldn't have said that. Perhaps I should edit that out of the video and maybe none of you would think to ask it. And if you did think to ask it, I could just ignore the questions and pretend I didn't see them and no one would be the wiser. Anyway, on to the next test. Well, it looks like past Joshua's got my back once again. <laughs> Turns out he did do the test of the Foxer Wildfire versus the UAV RX5808 Evo. And like I said in the previous one, these guys are somewhat close in price. The Wildfire, I think, uh, comes in at about 80 bucks. The Euro V comes in around 60 bucks. Uh, the Wildfire is supposed to have like sync reconstruction and all that fancy nonsense. Let's see how they stack up against each other. And I gotta say, I think it's pretty close. It just kind of, I think, depends on, you know, which eyeball is looking at which screen when there's breakup. Feels pretty close to me, but... Obviously, we got some screen rolling from the wildfire. There. Oh, a screen roll from the Uruvay. Kind of like a back and forth. They seem pretty close. 
Last test here is the AKK versus the Yuru AV. And the reason I wanted to include this is the AKK is just about the cheapest module you can buy on Banggood today at about $35. The only one that is cheaper is the Eashin Pro 58, which usually is close to $25. But to get the most out of it, you have to flash it with custom firmware. And oh my God. Yeah. So, uh... Normally, I'm like, well, you decide. I'm not going to try and sway your decision, but oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so don't don't buy the AKK. I mean, I know this is like a worst-case scenario. So is it usable in some conditions? Sh sure. But you should just buy the Eashin Pro 58. Even if you don't flash the Eashin Pro 58 with the Achilles firmware that makes it even better, it's still just basically a, a solid module in terms of its hardware design. And I just, I, that dropout that you saw the AKK do, that's not a firmware problem. That's a, that's just a, I mean, I don't know. That's how I read it. Don't buy the AK, buy the Ishin instead. Ishin's not in this test. I've tested it before. It's solid. Okay, moving on. Now that we've established the performance of the modules, let's take a look at the user interface. And we'll start with the Uru AV. Um, the default screen shows the band and channel, as well as the signal strength in real time as it varies between the top and the bottom antenna. Now at the moment, we're on the wrong channel, so we're not seeing any signal strength. So let's just go up to race eight, which is where my quadcopter is. And you can see the RSSI bars are now updating and we can see the RSSI here going up and down as it goes. If you have, you're not gonna see this while you're flying. So it's kind of just a, a novelty, but it is kind of cute. If we press the middle button, we go into the menu. Uh, we can save channels. So you can save a preset of channels. You know, if you have commonly used channels, um, we can go to all channels and that lets me switch here between bands and there's a lot of bands a low band yeah how about that if i long press does it switch bands no how do you freaking switch i've been i've been trying to figure this i've re recorded this segment like four times because each time i thought i knew how to change bands and each time i've been wrong and then i'm like well don't don't look like you're didn't do your research before making the video joshua how do you change the freaking Band without. See, look, we're just going through race band. Is it long press? No. Is it long press the middle button? No. Uh, that lets you lock lock the interface, save this channel as a favorite, or exit. How do you just change band? I mean, the thing is, this interface looks really freaking familiar. I don't know if, I think it, it looks a lot like the old Furious FPV interface. I don't know if that means Furious FPV is actually UAV or if it's just UAV is like, I don't know. But you would go into the matrix here and if you single press, it would go up through the channels. And if you long press, it would skip bands, but it isn't doing that. I can't think of, a, I can't seem to find a way. And no, it's not in the manual either, although there is a manual so i guess that's kind of nice okay so there's not a quick way to change bands as far as i can tell let's look at the settings warning makes it beep at you when the rssi is too low auto lock automatically locks the uh, buttons uh so that if you accidentally bump the buttons you don't change channel while you're flying or, or if your friends run up and bump the buttons speed is the diversity switching speed you typically use high speed for indoor environments with lots of multipath and low speed for if you're doing like long range flying where you don't want it jumping between antennas too aggressively. And uh, and that's it. That's basically it. Uh, there is an on-screen display in the goggles showing the band and channel. That is all it appears to show. It doesn't appear to be showing um, RSSI or anything like that and it does not appear to be configurable anywhere that I can see here in the in the module. The module also uses the on-screen display for the menu, so you can adjust the settings from within the goggles without taking them off your face. However, it had some issues with uh, sync pulses. It was, see how it's not lined up with the bottom of the screen? And also it's kind of flickering, so it was having some issues. There's no USB port anywhere on this. So if it is firmware updatable, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. 
Well, the AKK performed so poorly in the range test that I'm kind of discouraged from showing its interface, but let's take a look at its interface. And in first glance, it looks very similar to the Uber AV. Yeah, really similar. Warning, auto lock, it's, it's identical. It's the same firmware, it's the same. All right, well, the interface is the same, but the hardware is much worse, so, um, yeah, don't buy it. Looks, it looks the same. <laughs> Another thing we should do is check the fit of the cover. The Uray V comes with this injection molded cover, and if we just, uh, I think probably what I'd like to do is just plug the module into the goggle. and then install the cover over the top of it, just so it's easier to line the pins up that way. And that's, it's not the prettiest thing I've ever seen, but it does feel, it lines up with the buttons, the buttons are secure, uh, and yeah, that's fine. It feels pretty snug and not gonna like rip out or anything. Oh yeah, look at that. That lines up real nice. That is, that's not bad. I've seen worse. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. And as always the question, should you buy it? And I think, as I said at the beginning of the video, what you have to compare the Yuru AV to is the Fox here Wildfire, which I have here on the bench because they're pretty close in price. The Wildfire at about $80. Last time I checked this one, the Yuru AV at about $60. Is the Wildfire better in terms of performance? You can go back to that. Well, that's the only one test, but you can go back and they look pretty close to me. As in terms of usability and build quality, to me, the Wildfire feels much better. It has an actual metal case um, and this just a much nicer interface overall. You can see, for example, that I can change channel and by long pressing, I can change ban. Oh, what a thing. <laughs> How about that? So I think there's no question that the Fox here is a little bit better made and a little bit easier to use and a little nicer. Uh, but it's like $20, $25 more, so it's up to you if you decide you want to go that direction. If you decide that you want to pick up any of these modules, there are links in the video description to the product pages. And in case you're new here, those are affiliate links. And that means that when you click that link, I get a small commission off of any purchase that you make after you click that link. Don't want to buy one of these modules? Want to buy a TBS Fusion or a, a Rapid Fire or anything? Just click the affiliate link make your purchases, I get a small commission. It's an easy way for you to help uh, help me out and uh, doesn't cost you anything. Um, if you would like to know more about TBS Fusion versus Rapid Fire, which I think are the best analog modules you can get today, I'm gonna put links in the video description to a similar test that I did comparing them, and you can see how they stack up against each other. In addition, I recently tested the Eashin EV300O goggles. They have a custom module in them made by Skyzone, I'm pretty sure. It's the same as the module in the Skyzone Sky 4 x which I have, but I haven't reviewed because it's basically the same goggle as the Ishii EV300 o just with better screens. Uh, anyway, that one also surprised the heck out of me. I did not expect much from the Ishii receiver module and it, uh, well, you'll see for yourself. There's a link in the video description to that if you want to check it out. Thank you so much for watching. What do you think? Is the Yuru AV worth the price based on what you've seen of it? Or um, is it an also ran? What do you think? <laughs> is the AKK worth the price? Oh, AKK, your video transmitters are, are pretty solid. AKK video transmitters are okay. I don't know what's going on with this module. It has to be a hardware problem, right? I don't know. That's going to do it for this video, though. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, happy flying with analog goggles, because analog isn't dead yet. Not yet. You guys, I don't know where I am, and 
I, I don't know what's going to happen, but if I don't make it out of this, I just want to know that you subscribe to my channel or, or maybe join my Patreon or, or click one of the... Click one of these videos I picked out for you. <laughs>